So let's go ahead and start talking about different operations that we can perform on complex numbers. Remember, we're working with the complex number z equals a plus jb. The first operation that we're going to talk about here is conjugation. For taking the conjugate of a complex number z, we use this star notation very often. So z star is also read as the conjugate of z. And to compute the conjugate of a complex number, all you do is you find all the j's and you replace the j's with negative j. So originally we had a plus jb was equal to z. When I take the conjugate of z, I find j, and here there was only one of them, and I replace j with negative j. So it's turned from a plus jb to a negative jb. If you have a more complicated um, number with maybe lots of terms that haven't been combined, you would do the same thing. You would just replace every single j that you see with a negative j. We often like to take the magnitude of complex numbers. The magnitude of the complex number z we denote with these lines. So we take the magnitude of z. By definition, the magnitude of a complex number is equal to the square root of the complex number times its complex conjugate. So really right here, this serves as the definition of what we mean by the magnitude of a complex number. From here, let's go ahead and substitute in what z is equal to. z is equal to a plus jb, so we have that right there. And then z conjugate, we just computed that here, so if we plug that in here, we now have the square root of the product of two quantities. Now we can go ahead and just multiply these out like we normally do. a times a is a times a. This times this is just minus jab. This times this is jba. And this times this Remember, j is the square root of a negative 1. So when we have j times a negative j, that's a negative, negative 1, or positive 1. So we end up with plus b times b. Notice what happens right here in the middle. We have minus jab plus jab. So those completely cancel each other out. So all we're left with is the aa term and the bb term. So that's a squared and b squared. So it's equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And if you think back to the previous video, what we meant by r, r was the kind of the hypotenuse of the triangle whose sides were a and b. Well, that's ex this is exactly what r is. r is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Another way of thinking about the magnitude is it's just the distance that you are from the origin. So again, that's exactly what this quantity is. This is how far this point is away from the origin. It's a distance of r away from the origin. So that was magnitude. We can also talk about computing the angle of a complex number. And we sometimes write that with this little angular symbol. So let's take the angle of the complex number z. When dealing with angles, sometimes taking angles using the polar format of the complex number z is easier. So that's what I've done here. I've rewritten z as r e to the j theta, because that's another way to write down z. The angle of this, well, r has no angle. It's just a real quantity. The angle of e to the j theta, by definition, is theta. So the angle of z is equal to theta. Another way to think about this is this is the angle formed in the complex plane. Remember, this is a triangle whose sides are a and b. So just doing the little trig, we can solve for theta as the tan inverse of b over a. All right, so let's do a similar comp computation. Let's take a magnitude of a complex quantity. But now, instead of taking the magnitude of just a single complex number, let's take the magnitude of a ratio of complex numbers. So let's say I have complex number z1 and complex number z2, z1 divided by z2, and I want to take the magnitude of this ratio. So that's what I've done. I've taken the magnitude of this ratio. How would I compute this quantity? Well, remember, by definition, anytime we take the magnitude of a complex quantity, that means take the square root of whatever is inside, so you write that down, times its complex conjugate. So that's what I've done here. I've just used the definition of magnitude to write this line down. The conjugate of the ratio is just the conjugate of each individual piece. You just find all the j's on the numerator and switch them to negative j's, and you find all the j's in the denominator and switch those to negative j's. So that's equal to this. And then if I multiply this out, the numerator is just z1 times z1 star, and the denominator is just z2 times z2 star. 
from this line to this line, what am I doing? Well, the square root of a ratio is just a ratio of square roots, right? The square root of a over b is the same thing as the square root of a divided by the square root of b. So that's what I've done from this line to this line. I'm just taking the square root of each piece by itself. So that's just algebra that we know. Then look what I have written right here. This, by definition, is the magnitude of z1. The magnitude of z1, by definition, is the square root of z1 times z1 conjugate. Same thing happened on the denominator. This is the magnitude of z2. By definition, the magnitude of z2 is the square root of z2 times z2 conjugate. So what I end up with is just a ratio of magnitude. So the magnitude of a ratio is just a ratio of magnitude. So that's a nice fact that you probably would have guessed at if you had to guess, but we've actually kind of gone through the steps and shown that to be the case a little bit more rigorously. And this often happens when you deal with um, complex valued functions, you'll query a function at a specific point, and what you'll end up with is a ratio of complex numbers. If you want to take the magnitude of that ratio, this is exactly how you do it. Just take the magnitude of the numerator, take the magnitude of the denominator, and then divide them. And that is the same thing as the magnitude of the ratio. Similarly, what if we wanted to find the angle or phase of a ratio of complex numbers? So for this example here, we're still going to be working with two complex numbers, z1 and z2. Since I'm wanting to do angle, I'm going to write them in polar format. So r1 e to the j theta 1, r2 e to the j theta 2. And what I really want to compute is the angle of this ratio. So z1 divided by z2, what is the angle of that ratio? So by definition, if I want to take the angle of this, so all I've done is substitute in the polar format for z1 and z2. From here to here, what have I done? Well, all I've done is use the property of exponents. Instead of having e to the j theta 2 on the denominator, I can have e to the minus j theta 2 on the numerator. And then from this line to this line, all I did was use properties of exponents. e to the j theta 1 times e to the minus j theta 2. You add exponents when you multiply them together. So I've rewritten it as e to the j theta 1 minus theta 2. So this is now in the format that's really easy to find the angle. The angle of this is just whatever is up here. So the angle is just theta 1 minus theta 2. So this is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2. Note that theta 1 is the angle of z1, right? If we compute just the angle of z1, we would get theta 1. And theta 2 is the angle of z2. If we were to compute the angle of z2, we would get theta 2. So what happened was we took the angle of a ratio and we ended up getting a difference of angles. When we took the magnitude of a ratio, we just got the ratio of magnitudes. This is a little different when dealing with angle. The angle of a ratio is actually a difference of their angles, and this math explains why. And then just finally for completeness, let's talk about addition and multiplication of complex numbers. We've actually used some of these already. These are the things people tend not to forget when they uh, deal with complex numbers. They know how to add and multiply. It's more of the angle and phase stuff that they have trouble with. So that's why I focused on that. But if we have two complex numbers, z1 and z2, and for this example, I've written them in rectangular format. So a1 plus jb1 is z1, and a2 plus jb2 is z2. If we add them, so what if we want to compute z1 plus z2? What do we do? Well, we add the real components together to get a1 plus a2, and we add the imaginary components together to get b1 plus b2. So when you add them together, you just treat the real dimension as kind of its own spot thing, and you treat the imaginary dimension as its own thing, and they stay separate. What about multiplying? Well, multiplying, we've actually done this on a few charts ago. You can just do this algebraically. If I want to take z1 times z2, I just multiply this out term by term, so a1 times a2 plus JA1, JB2, that's this term here, plus this term right here, plus this term right here, and again, J times J is negative 1, so we get a negative pop-up. And then at this point, I have just four different terms. This is a real quantity, and this is a real quantity, so I've grouped those together here in this real term. This is an imaginary quantity, and this is an imaginary quantity, so I've combined those here in this term. So multiplying is pretty easy. Just multiply them out algebraically like you always do, and just keep in mind that j times j is negative 1. And when you're done, it's often nice to group them back into this format here. This and this are completely equal, right? We have equal signs here, but this form is a little bit more easy to see since the real 
and imaginary components have been split apart nicely. This still looks like the form of a real part plus j times an imaginary part. So that's the end of this video. We have reviewed some basic operations for complex numbers, addition, multiplication, conjugation, phase, and magnitude. And we also looked at the special case of taking the magnitude of a ratio of complex numbers and the special case of taking the angle of a ratio of complex numbers. All the examples we did here were done you know, very symbolically. There are no kind of numbers here. They were just A's and B's floating around. In the next video, we'll actually do specific examples and we'll replace all these symbols with actual real-valued quantities.